Yes, that man right there is about to fall, possibly to his death. He goes by the name of Jaleel, one of this generation's most fascinating personalities in music, let alone hip-hop. Also, arguably the biggest rapper to ever come out of Rhode Island. And since we're Rhode Island's number one podcast and YouTube channel, we had to sit down with the man. Oh, he survives, by the way. But then he falls again. Don't we all? We set up in his green room, and he gave us an unfiltered conversation. Literally seconds after doing his second Muslim prayer of the night. A beautiful experience for us to witness. And pardon the technical difficulties we usually film in our studio, but we had to travel for Jaleel. Special occasion. Oh, f*** you, Steven. <laughs> you too. Why are you laughing? No, we're, you we're, too. We're, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to go to Juneteenth in New York. Why am I not there? You're Facts. Crazy. Well, three hours, three hours away. Out? Doesn't Rhode, Rhode Island have like a PVD fest or some shit? Oh yeah, there's a, there's a huge scandal with that right now. What happened? Yeah, so the PVD with PVD fest, the mayor's changing it. So our mayor right now, we got a new mayor in Providence. It's a white mayor, Brett Smiley. He's a brand new mayor, and PVD fest. It, Used to be obviously in downtown, you know, block parties, everything. But now the mayor announced that he's moving PD, PBD Fest from June, July. Now it's going to happen in September. That's whack. And now there's no more block parties permitted. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. And then also, um, no more block parties and no more open containers. So basically, no one can drink. So I basically, people were already, I, I was the one that reported the news. I broke the story. Yeah. And then people were like, what? This has actually happened? A lot of people didn't know. It went viral, and then I, I, everyone was basically like, oh, boycott it, boycott it. So I made a post, like, basically calling a boycott for yeah. PVD Fest, and that went viral. And now his team, the city's team, uh, reached out to me, and now they're thinking about changing it again back to normal. Because everyone's like, bro, don't fuck up PVD Fest. Like, this is all we, there's 100,000 people come every year. Yeah. Like, that's huge for Rhode Island, you know, but, yeah, I don't know. And it makes no sense, and I, I kind of, like, uh, threw a sub at him. Uh, because I, it's definitely like some biased because, you know, pride happened yesterday at PUD in Providence. It was packed. hundred thousand people it, during the rain. It was raining. It was packed. For real? You know, but he didn't do nothing for them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like some bias there because he's gay. He has, he's openly gay. And I was like, yo, like we got to be equal so for everyone. Black people. Yeah, exactly. Kinda... For the black people, the people of color in the city, you don't want to do that. Like that's whack. I feel it. You know, Damn, that's crazy. Bro, it's wild right now. It's wild Jeez. in the city, but it's, it's, you know, it's all for the for the better in some aspect. All right, we're gonna go right, everything's rolling. They gonna let me for my ambition. Shout out to everybody out in the world. This is Sound from Club Ambition Podcast Cap. I'm your host every week. And you know, Rhode Island is always in tune tapping in. I always say PVD to the world, Rhode Island to the world. And you know, shout out to Marloon. You know, without him, this wouldn't be able to happen as well. Engineering today, helping out today, per usual in the building. But, man, special guest, long-awaited, long-anticipated. When it comes to the history of Rhode Island, everything that I cover, everything that I embody, is really just about being proud of where I'm from. You know, I feel like you can go anywhere in the world. You can literally go to Germany, anywhere across the entire world, and they're going to ask you, oh, where are you from? Where, you know, where were you raised? Where you go to school to? And I'm always be like, Rhode Island. You know, you can't lie. You know, some people, though, have lied. They'll be like, New England, or like, uh, New York. It was like, bro, you really from Rhode Island, right? <laughs> but when it comes to the history of Rhode Island, you know, I've really embodied it and learned to embrace it more than ever. And now it's become like huge where it's like a tourist site more than ever. You know, smallest state in the country, but one of the biggest creative hubs ever, especially people coming from it, right? And the man sitting to the right of me is a manifestation of that. You're someone that is literally an embodiment of Rhode Island. We could do it, you know. Oh, it's the smallest state. You know, the hi history shows that not really much any people make it from here at all. But this man sitting to the right of me did. And arguably, you can call him, you know, the most successful rapper in the history of Rhode Island. We've been debating, you know, and we can talk about that today. <laughs> it might get spicy, it might get controversial, but listen, at the end of the day, numbers speak for themselves. And without further ado, it's a pleasure to have Jaleel on our platform. Jaleel, yeah. Appreciate you coming, brother. That's good, you know, bro. Appreciate giving, you. Giving some time. You know, 
or us coming here, we, we had to make the studio mobile today. The yeah. first time ever, but we had to a special occasion for Jaleel. Thank but this you. has literally been like a year in the making, bro. Like no bullshit. Like a year plus, almost two years in the making, ever since your actual, you know, rise and you going viral, you know, with diving. I'm someone that, you know, I'm known for tapping in with artists, reacting to the music. So when I saw your song, I'm like, this is hard. Like, what is, who is this guy, right? And yeah. then you're doing these backflips and everything. I'm like, this man is, like, special. Like, what the fuck? And then I do some research, and it's like, oh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm like, no fucking way. He's from Rhode Island? Like, us? Like, and I'm thinking I'm tapped into every artist from my state. Little do I know that we had one that, you know, moved away but blew up. But he still reps Rhode Island, and we have you here on the podcast. No, no, let's talk about your story real quick. Your Rhode Island history. Where were you born and yeah. raised? I was born in Hasbro Children's Hospital in Providence. Wow. And I was raised in Pawtucket, the bucket. Really? Bucket boy? Yeah. You're a bucket boy. Right next to, what's it called? Uh, Pawtucket Postock Stadium. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's not there no more. No, yeah. no not anymore. But I, was, I, li I live near there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. And then your family, everyone's from there, like both sides of your family, your pops, your moms, everyone? No, nah, they're from Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, so they moved to America like in the 80s, you know? Okay. And Rhode Island was the first place they settled down and they had me in wow. the 90s, yeah. That's amazing, wow. And uh, uh, so how old are you right now? I'm 27. 27, yeah. wow. Yeah. Damn. I'm, I've been doing music since I was like 21. 21. Like, seriously. Wow. So then take us back to, like, you you as a child, because, you know, as kids growing up, you know, we always, if we're with friends, you know, you're into hip-hop. Like, I've tried rapping. We've tried, like, a little rapping, but not taking it serious. But what was the first time ever that Jaleel was like, I'm going to be a rapper? Was it during middle school, high school? And what, you know, or not even going to be a rapper, or even played with the rapping, and what was the actual school that you went to in Rhode Island? Okay. Oh. My bad. No, you're good, bro. Um, so I went to, you know what? I was in college when I started making music. I was like a junior in college. I was going to Loyola University, Maryland. Oh, wow. And I was trying to be an athlete. You know, a lot of people see me, they're like, this thing is supposed to be on the football field. Or he's supposed to be in a wrestling ring. A wrestler or some shit. And, <laughs> you know, I really wanted to be an athlete, but it just wouldn't work out. Wow. You know, but the moment I tried music, it just felt like I found it in my soul. <laughs> you know, I feel like I, I was chosen for music. Yeah. Like, I felt like that's what my purpose is, you know. Obviously, it's bigger than just music, but I feel like music is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then being from Rhode Island, did you ever feel any discouragement, like, early on, you know, because of the fact that it's such a small state? You know, you're from there, but then there's not really many examples, especially at the time when you were coming up, that, oh, I can do it like them. You know, did you, what, was that something that you felt like, damn, Rhode Island maybe might not be the way, let me move out, and that's what made yeah. you do that push? Yeah, I was just always trying to move out of Rhode Island. Yeah. So as soon as I got the opportunity, I was gone. <laughs> because I was like, it's hard to make it from Rhode Island, you know, but if I move to L.A., I feel like I can, I have a better chance. Yeah. But, you know, all it is is social media. Like, if you make some motion on TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts, yeah, then that's really all you need, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you can be in Rhode Island and blow up if the music is good, if you have a story, if something about you is very unique, yeah. you know, that no one has, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely do think that if I stayed in Rhode Island and kept cooking, I definitely could have blown up in Rhode Island. Yeah, I think it could happen. It might have taken more time. Yeah, 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 definitely. You probably just expedited the process by relocating, but I feel like your talent, you know, wherever it would have been, it would have just been a timing matter. Yeah, facts, You know what I'm saying? Facts, like the facts. right eyes to see it, you know? And then what's your actual, like, name? Are you, what's your, is your real legal name Jaleel? What's your full yeah. legal name? My full name is Abdul Jaleel Yusuf, but Abdul is like a, I'm Muslim. So yes. like Abdul is what they put before 
a lot of Muslims names. Muslims names, yeah. Yeah, but Jalil, Jalil Yusuf has always been like everybody calls me Jalil, my mom and my dad. Jalil, yeah. you know. And it's spelled the same way? Yeah, Jalil Yusuf. Wow. Yeah, so on a birth certificate it says Abdul Jalil Yusuf. Yeah. But yeah, Jalil Yusuf is is what Well, that's fire. When I say first and last, I say Jalil Yusuf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Okay. And then, damn. So you never had like a rapper name, you or you always like, I'm gonna just use my name. I just wanted to use my name. Yeah. You know. I thought my name was always cool. I think it's fire. You know. But I don't know any other Jaleel, especially spelled that way. I don't know nobody else. Yeah. 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 I don't know nobody else. No. You know. Jaleel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just hits. Yeah. You know? No facts. And for those who know, we're here on location, actually backstage at the Massachusetts show. Uh, Jaleel is actually on tour right now. Um, so if you hear in the background, <laughs> that that's what I'm we at right now. Yeah, about to perform. Yeah, about to perform. Off, hit a couple backflips. Yep, yep. Yeah. Listen, man. But let's talk about you as an artist, right? When it comes to Jaleel's music, you know, you started rapping, you said at 21, right? Yeah. Would you say that your music has always been like the same from the beginning? No, nah, I feel like my I feel like my music has gotten better. Yeah. Like I feel like it changed dramatically. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like my music is way stronger and I'm I'm just growing as an artist. I can do different sounds, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like my sound has changed and you know, it's always changing. It's oh it's not just one thing, it's all different types of sounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, like, looking at your older stuff, you had more like a, I guess like a emo, what do you say? A, like, goth aesthetic? Yeah. What do you say? Rather, right? Would you, would you compare that, like, easily to that? That's what it is? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was more of like a, like a darker type of sound, but it still had that rage element. Yeah. And now, like, I just want to show I could do everything, like, yeah. From Afro to trap to drill to R and B. I just want people to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fire. And then going forward more now to your music right now, in my opinion, you know, especially in rap, you see so many music artists, so many rappers, and the trend seems to be the stereotypical money bitches drugs, right? Straight up money bitches drugs. And I'm a fan of it as well. But then I feel like your music is way more like positive yeah. in comparison to everyone else's, right? And at the same time, it's still like punk rock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So talk about that a bit. Like, was that a, a, a strategy? Like, or were you just being yourself in the music? Like, you I know what I'm saying? Like I was just being myself. Like, <laughs> I wasn't really thinking. Yeah. I was just like, fuck it. I'll just sing what I think or what I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But, like, you know, I feel like people do need that positivity. Yeah. It's like a lot of rappers, like, you know, like, are a part of that negative light, you know? And a lot of them are dying and going to jail. Yeah. So I feel like I, you know, want to bring that positive light. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then you literally... Even in real life, like right now, before, oh, what is it? Are you good? Even before you started um, talking to us, you literally were praying, right? And I saw that, and I'm like, damn, this man really is like who I kind of expected you to be, right? Because I hear your music, I see everything. I'm like, I don't know him personally, but I'm like, it comes off like he's positive. A lot of your songs, you mentioned God. A lot. You ha literally have songs that the title has God in it, right? Yeah. And then you start off right now praying. So talk about that. Is this something that you have been like your entire life? Your family's been Muslim and you're, you've you openly practiced it? Yeah. Or is it something that maybe now as an adult you embody more? Or uh, what's been that journey with religion with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like as a Muslim, like, you know, like, it's always about praying to God and praying to Allah. Yeah. You know? And, like, even though I'm a Muslim, I don't like to, like, I don't like to, like, basically, like, 
be talking about like yeah. Islam and music, you know what yeah. I mean? But like saying like God sent or like saying God, like I just wanna, you know, I wanna just ease it in. I don't wanna just like Yeah, yeah. You don't wanna force it. No, I don't wanna force it. You wanna be like it. organic. Cause, cause music and that and religion, they don't go hand in hand. Yeah, you know? yeah. It can unless, get, it can, unless, unless you do it's gospel. gospel. Yeah. Unless it's gospel, but, you know, like, in Islam, like, music isn't really, like, it's not, it's like haram. It's not. Yeah. It's not, like, something that a Muslim should be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's positive music, but mostly they said, like, Muslims shouldn't be doing music at all, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. So, like... So that was hard for your family, maybe, to accept at first? Nah, so with my family, like, I grew up in a, a very musical... Yeah, yeah. Very musical, but, like, I'm African. So, like, we always listen to Afro beats and stuff, yeah. you know? So it was always different for me because my culture is African. Yeah. You know, but my religion is Islam. So... Like, I, I talked to my parents about it, and they were like, they were like, as long as it's positive and you're not misleading people, yeah, you know? And that's just always just been my culture. I'm African. Yeah, yeah. You know, but some people really, some people really, like, um, are really about that, like, yeah. you know? And I respect that, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like I'll look at that and be like, damn, like, I just hope that, God sees that I'm trying to do the right thing too, you know? I think so. I, I would say so. Because I, I, I'm not Muslim, but I definitely appreciate and respect, like, all religions across the board, you know, especially God-fearing. Like, I grew up Catholic. Now I kind of do more of, like, a Christian practice. But in general, I'm just connected to, like, spirituality. And I really respect people that, like you, like you guys praying like beforehand. Like I found that amazing. You know, it's just an amazing experience to, to see and even be around. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was beautiful to see. So now, when it comes to the Jaleel career, you moved to LA. What was that moment of like signing? You know, like now you're on tour with the, with the label backing and everything. But prior, you were independent, right, for a while, right? What was that journey of, like, signing and then why you signed at all? Because you could have stayed independent forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I could have stayed independent, but I felt like it was the right time to sign. Yeah. Because one of the labels, 10K. Yeah, 10K Projects. Tri Tribute signed to them. Ice yep. Spice signed to them. Yep, yep. And I felt like they were a good label for me because I always wanted creative control. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, if I have creative control and I have leverage, why not? You know? Yeah. And I love working with them. They're good people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I still get to do what I want to do, you know? Yeah. And it's been going well. Like, obviously, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. You know? It's not like I had, like, a crazy blow up. Yeah. That even went viral, but it, it didn't hit. Like, yeah. It wasn't a hit song. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, I'm glad that they looked at me and was like, yo, we, this kid is going crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they do see me as more than just a song. They see me as an artist, as a performer, so. Yeah, because you, you probably had many labels. Yeah, many labels at that time. Like, yeah. Last year when Diving was blown up. And that must have been a wild moment. But then it goes back to, like like you said, the organic aspect, connection aspect, rather than just some monetary shit, like something that is like, you know, they give you creative freedom, and that's what you got with them. Yeah, 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 facts, facts, know? facts. So then that, with them, uh, so it was uh, maybe like an album situation. That's what led to the album now, like signing with them. You made, they made the album. That was the plan to, like, sign and drop an album? Or was the new music on Real Raw old stuff? That you just added? Like, what was that? It was more like, it was more like, I'll do a couple albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see how it goes type shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that was basically what it was. Like, you know, they were going to keep pushing Dive In and keep pushing the songs. And yeah, yeah. We'll put out a couple albums, see how yeah. it feels. Yeah. But it's been good so far. Like, at the end of the day, whether you have a label or not, 
you still gotta push it. You know, and I'm not at the I'm not at the level where I drop some shit and everybody listens to it. Yeah. I'm still growing. I'm still yeah. trying to build a fan base. So Yeah. I'm doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, that's true. No, yeah. I, I can see that, man. And then go into like the classic moment of your song going viral, right? Dive in. Right away people see like you doing backflips, you're tall, you know, you're buff, you're ripping your shirt. What was the mindset like to carry that on? Because I remember hearing that it was something that you were thinking about, you know, to go viral, get the attention, right? Yeah. But then to carry that on currently, like consistently, like, first of all, it has to be fucking tiring. <laughs> Like, I don't know how you do backflip. You probably do a backflip at least once a day. If not more, right? Like, how many wife beaters would you say that you ripped? Like, in total? Like, the amount has to be insane. Bro, too many, bro. Like... But that's kind of what I wanted. Like, yeah. I want people to do it. I want people to see it. I want people to know. You know? So it's like, I did a lot. Yeah. I did one today. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but what I have to promote, I got to promote it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I don't promote it, then how is it going to go? I agree. I you agree. Know? I agree. You, you have no sense of, like, embarrassment or, like, uh a weird conscious I feel like a lot of artists get sh too shy like Tyler Creator was talking about recently where like if you have a project and it's out or a song and it's out promote it you know like really push it because people get mad like why is no one listening to this shit why is no one checking this out it's because you're not promoting it and people don't even know yeah it's like you put something out and you might be thinking damn my shit is trash yeah. <laughs> like people don't fuck with this song but it's like you gotta find ways to promote it. Yeah. Just posting a music video isn't gonna do it. Yeah, you've like, been you can, yeah, you've been you one of the most like, uh, amazing be, marketings. Yeah, like if there's a part in the song where it's kind of relatable, that's funny. Yeah. Do some shit to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you gotta be you gotta be on it. You gotta be like like a dog. You gotta be relentless, trying to find ways. Yeah. You know, like that's what I am. Like I feel like. Every time I'm promoting, I feel like I'm like, how can I hack the internet? <laughs> I'm always trying to hack the planet. Like, cause that's what I did with Dive In. Yeah, you did. I was hacking it. I was like, every day just trying to peel it back, peel it back, peel it back until I finally did. Yeah. So now I'm trying to do it again. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see it. I saw you it. No. It was all strategic. I, I, I'm someone that respects I marketing. Like, I feel like I'm in the door. But I gotta break down a couple more doors. So I'm like, I gotta just break it down, like find a way to break it down, like always plotting. Yeah. You know? I got that 50 cent mentality when it comes to that, like just trying to find a way, you know? No, I love what it. What did he say? I've been patiently waiting for a track to explode on him. Like, I'm like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? So. No, I love it. And then even going back to like certain things, like your slogan. Jaleel, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like <laughs> sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and just be like, Jaleel, yeah. Like, that should be, like, <laughs> stuck in my brain. Jaleel, I was saying yeah. that the whole ride here. I'm like, Jaleel, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, we about to see the guy that literally is Jaleel and made this phrase up, Jaleel, yeah. So talk about just that, like, literally saying your name and then, yeah, after that. It's such a simple concept, but at the same time, talk about the, that actual creation of that because that had to be an idea or even if it happened naturally, it's still an idea to keep it going. Like, yeah. what made you want to, like, embody that slogan and carry that on? I got it I got it from my mom. Your mom? Yeah, wow. because she would be like, Jaleel. And I would always hear the melody in it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I have a good ear, you know? Yeah. So I was like, maybe I'll just use that. And then, because she would call me, and I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. So Jaleel and yeah, <laughs> Jaleel, yeah, you know. Oh so my like, god, it's just a call and response thing. That's why when I'm performing, I'm like Jaleel. They're like yeah, yeah Jaleel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fire. 
That's yeah. fire. Shout out to moms. And has how's been the mom been? How's your mother been receiving all your success? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is she proud of her son? Yeah. They're good. They're good. They um in Nigeria right now. My mom and my dad. They're proud, you know. They're very happy how everything is going. Yeah. You know? So, oh, so they moved back to Nigeria? They're in Nigeria right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so no longer Rhode Island? They come back and forth. Okay, we'll, nice. We'll see Nigeria. Oh, nice. And my brother, he's good. He actually stays out here. But Oh, wow. Good, yeah. Nah, that's amazing, My bro. sister, too. She stays in Rhode Island. So how many how many siblings in total? I got two. Two more? I'm the youngest. Y'all want to meet your little sister and brother? Yeah. Yo, Misty Nas, get on stage. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. You know, it's hard to be an artist. Yeah. In today's day and age. Like back in the day, like the early 2000s, artists would just put out music and the fans just had to accept it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But now, like, you might drop a song and people would like criticize it, like, it'll go into such a a big hysteria about one song, like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's like, before it used to be just, the fans just had to accept what it, what came to them because they loved it. Yeah. And now it's like... It's a new era. It's a new era, like, music is more of an aesthetic. Yes. It's not a song. It's not like, music isn't music anymore. Like, you know, the artists plays a part in what the song is like people don't kids don't look at songs as they used to anymore yeah you know yeah it's like music talent talent doesn't sell anymore yeah you know it's more than that it's more than talent you need like a like, not a gimmick but you need like something that is gonna reel them in grab them and i think that's what tiktok and all the short form content has caused, yeah, you know, right. but you're someone as an example that you literally utilize the internet to your yeah. advantage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even to this day, like you always have Instagram reels or TikToks still going viral, you know, yeah. of newer songs, you know what I'm saying? So talk about that, like where typically an artist nowadays would come out and they probably need like a marketing team to tell them that, right? Yeah. But with you, it's natural. You are your marketing. You know what I'm saying? So what made you, like, connect to that right away? Were, were you always on the internet as a kid? Were you, like, an internet kid, like, bro, reading love, blogs and shit? I love WWE, bro. Oh, yeah? I feel like WWE was a big inspiration for me, especially, like, Jeff Hardy. Yeah. You know? So WWE is very internet-y, too. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that was the type of kid I was, like... I was always playing WWE SmackDown. Really? You know? SmackDown versus uh, Raw. Yeah, SmackDown versus Raw. You know? And I just love... I love Jeff. I love... Jeff Hardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hardy yeah. brothers. I just love the high energy shit. And that was just me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was always on the internet, too. I was on MySpace and shit. Yeah. So that shit was lit. I was just performing, having fun. Yeah. And then even talking about that... Would you see yourself ever in the future doing like something else other than rapping? Obviously, sports probably too late that he can't do no sports no more, you know. Yeah. But let's say like acting or even wrestling. Would you see a Jaleel? Like, are we ever gonna see a Jaleel WWE maybe character or like persona? You know what I'm saying? I think it's it's part of the Jaleel story. You know, I just gotta get my name bigger. Yeah. But they haven't, like, reached out yet or nothing, no? WWE or... Not really yet. Not really? Yeah, but, you know, I think it's going to happen soon, whether it's WWE or AEW. Yeah, yeah, AEW. I think, I think, I think, um, 
You see, like, the artists that are doing shit with them are bigger artists. Yeah, Bad Bunny, so, yeah, Bad Snoop Dogg. So they definitely want to do it with me, but I think they're just waiting for me to... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. No. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be bound to happen. But I think even in general, like, you could do... Who knows in the future some movies? Like you look like an action, like an action character or some shit. Like, yeah, nah, facts. <laughs> I want to be in movies too. I want to do movie. I want to. I'm very into fashion. Like, yeah, yeah. I love clothes. Even though I be ripping my shirt, I really fuck with clothes. Like, I really fuck with with the art of fashion and you know, like pieces and how they fit. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Have you have you ever ripped like anything expensive like a chrome shirt or some shit like a chrome hearts hoodie or something? You ever ripped some shit? Like ripped that? A, I've ripped a chrome de garçon shirt <laughs> for a video. But, oh my god! Yeah, I was wilding. <laughs> nah, man. Listen, I I don't know, man. I don't know how you do it. How, talk about right now. Currently, we're on tour. People, they can obviously hear it. Right now, going on tour. Talk about the difficulties and like the dark side of it, the stressful side. Because people see you on stage, but behind stage, all the work that goes in, you know, shout out to Steven. We met Steven, the tour manager. Shout out to Jimmy. Right, Jimmy? Who, who's Jimmy? Who's Jimmy on your team? What does he do on your team? Jimmy, uh, oh, James. Yeah, yeah. Oh, James is my, he's like day-to-day manager. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we met the people behind the scenes. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. You know, you have a full-on team. So talk about... This is being your first tour, headline tour, right? You're the headline at the stops. And transitioning from being an opener yourself. And now you got people opening for you. You know, right now we're basically at your homecoming type of performance in a sense. We're not in Rhode Island, but we're in New England. So talk about that full circle moment of now, Jaleel, I'm on my own tour. It feels good. Like, I'm thankful. I just want to, I just want to make an impact, bro. Like... Whether it's whether it's my tour or I'm on someone else's tour, I just wanna just make an impact. Yeah. Like I'm thankful I'm as a headline Jaleel tour. But like I love like opening Yeah. Because I wanna see if I can I can outdo the opener. The I mean the, opener. the 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 uh the starter, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm like that's how I am. I'm just like, I want to see if I can outdo him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because usually I do. Yeah. You know, so that's that's really. No, that's fine. You know, I like headlining, though, too, you know, but I'm always like, how can I win? <laughs> and then talking about someone that you've, you know, opened for and connected with in the industry and, you know, one of my favorite artists to react to and listen to his music, Denzel Curry. Oh, yeah, Denzel Curry. Yeah, that's a homie. So when it comes to Denzel Curry, like, what is that connection like, that friendship? And were you someone that was, like, a fan of his prior to meeting him? And then now going from fan to friendship? Talk about that with Denzel. Yeah, I always knew it would happen one day, but, you know, Denzel's like me. He does Muay Thai, MMA, you know? So there's one day... You just tweeted, Jaleel, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I knew this day would come. <laughs> but he's a dope guy, goaded artist, you know? Yeah. He just, one of those guys that's just like, over time, like, I just know he finna be yeah, yeah. one of them ones, you know? No, I agree. I agree. He's very conceptual. And do you see yourself, like, do you guys have any more music coming with you and Denzel? Like, maybe more collabs, maybe, like, a collab yeah. project? Because you guys definitely sound good together. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely going to happen. We really made a hit, though. But, no bullshit. You know, like, I think it's going to happen again. It's just one of those things where over time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the time is right. Yeah, yeah. So, this is, so going now to right now, you have an album out called Real Raw, right? Yeah. There's a song on there, you know, Fast, Furious. And then you recently made a post talking about it, like, not it not being on the Fast and Furious uh, soundtrack, but was this an, a song that you made for the Fast and Furious soundtrack? Submitted it and then it got denied, or were you just bullshitting? I was just bullshitting because <laughs> I was like, think about the marketing shit. I was like, marketing. I don't care if it's not on Fast and Furious. I just want niggas to listen to the song so they can hear it. 
Yeah. And be like, oh, this sounds hard. That's that's the reason why I did it. It sounds like it should have been in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No it bullshit. It sounds like it, but I'm like, yo, like the marketing shit, you know? Yeah. Like I had a I had a um you know, like I just be trying to find ways to 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 promote my music yeah, yeah. every time. Like yeah. whether it's through a video or like someone saying something. Even confetti, like yeah. With the confetti song, I sang the beginning part. Yeah, and people were like, "Oh shit!" Like you sang that, and that just promoted the song too. I saw you made that TikTok that went viral. Yeah. Like you doing that? Yeah. And and that was you. That like, was but it wasn't no alteration in the voice. No, 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 no. That was That's me. crazy. Yeah, bro. I I low key sound like Michael Jackson <laughs> right now. My voice is kind of shot, and I've been performing, but shit's crazy. Do you do anything for your vocal? Do you do like vocal like practice exercises? I should. I'll be just taking a lot of tea and shit. Tea? Yeah. Tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because you really take it there. Your octaves go crazy. So I'm like, if he's on tour doing it every night, then promoting it on camera, screaming on the camera, screaming everywhere. Yeah. It has to take a toll on you. Like, have you felt it like sort of like have you had any like lost of voice yet ever? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. But it came back today, thank God, you know. <laughs> 24 hour turnaround. Yeah, but thank God never completely. It's always been like a little like after you get off, you know, you're like, hey. Yeah, yeah. But my voice is strong. I'm strong. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. And do you yeah. have like a daily workout? Do you work out every day? Yeah, I, try, I mean, not every day, but maybe three times a week. I might go to the gym, you know, hit the squats, yeah, hit, yeah. hit the abs. Shoulders. What's the most you like bench press? Like, what's your Leo's like max bench press at? My bet, my bench press isn't a lot, but my squat is a lot. Oh, what's your squat? Four or five. Damn. Go, 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 go. Yeah! God damn. That's almost half half a ton. Four fifteen. Damn. Yeah. Damn. That's, a lot. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, bro. I know it's crazy. <laughs> But, oh my god! And then going to like your actual music, like what does Jaleel listen to? Like, I would imagine it's not just hip hop because you have like a rock influence. So, what is your favorite like artist? Do you have a favorite artist of all time? I don't have a favorite artist, but I love a lot of artists. I love listening to Fifty, Fifty Cent, D Dmx, Dmx, Limp Bizkit. You know, like some Forty One. Yeah. You know, like. Um, what's his name? <laughs> Slim from 112. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the... R&B. Ask no questions. <laughs> you already know. That shit's hard. You know, like... I love Afrobeat. Yeah, Afrobeat. Burna. Yeah, Burna Boys. You know, guy. Asha K. I love everything, man. Like, all types of vibes. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with Nicki, Doja. Yeah, yeah. Rihanna. Huh? Do you have a dream collab that hasn't happened yet? Like, who do you see yourself working with musically that's like, damn, I want that to maybe happen one day? A Jaleel dream collab. Pink Panthers. Pink Panthers. I feel like me and her will make some crazy shit. But I have a lot of dream collabs. Like, XXX and Tassion, rest uh, in peace. Rest in peace, bro. Our I brother X. Hard. Uh, DMX. DMX, yeah, rest in peace. Damn. Rihanna. That'll be tough. That'll be fucking fire. Yeah, yeah. Damn, man. No, listen, man. You definitely fall in line with, like, you give me the vibes of, like, an X, for sure. You know, rest in peace, X, 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 Rest in peace. You know, we're, we're, peace, we're very close to that camp and that the people from X's team, so. Oh, for real? It's been amazing. Thank you, bro. So we got we got Jaleel Icing. So what happened? You, you, you fucked up one of your ankles? I low-key, so when I was in L.A., I don't know if he's seen it, but I brought up I brought up my boy Danny Garcia from AEW. Yeah, yeah. And I like had him come out on stage and I body slammed him. I don't know if he's seen it, but it's on my Instagram. It went viral. So that's why I'm icing, cause I kinda landed on my knee, but I'm good. That's crazy. Wait, I gotta use the bathroom. You want you can take a break. I'm good. You can take a yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Bathroom break, would you leave? <laughs> Can you?
you see yourself like in the light of like coincidentally, you know, someone that's playing right now like a a ski mask, a slump god, a ex we talked about earlier. Because immediately when you first came out, I would have I could have sworn that you had like a Florida connection. Cause you sounded so much like a Florida artist, right? Really? Wow. That's yeah, cool. and you had like the 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 hairstyle that could have been maybe like, oh, he might be Haitian. Like you never know. Like, you know, Florida's huge with the Haitians, the Zoe, shout out to the Zoes in the Florida. So I'm like, man, this man could have been like someone that I just didn't know about from Florida. But obviously you're from Rhode Island and I'm proud to say it. But do you see the connection there? Like musically? Like were you a fan of like that SoundCloud era like me, of yeah. like the trippies? The X, the Juice Worlds, and like, you know, I feel like you can easily fall in line with that lineage in a say. Yeah, no, nah, of course. I feel like growing up, you fuck with all those niggas, like Trippy, <laughs> and you know what I mean? Because they're all came from the underground type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just love all the shit. This song is hard. That song's hard. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> nah, Ken Carson is tough. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, bro, like, I grew up on the underground, but I, I'm, I, li I listen to a lot of shit. I'm not, I feel like a lot of people don't put me in the underground box. Yeah, because you, that's true. You don't really get the underground look. I feel like because maybe you come off a bit more mainstream yeah. in a sense. But the only thing that would make you a bit more mainstream probably would be like your content is not necessarily... As negative drug, I think. But then you still I are underground. I I think because people don't look at me as an aesthetic. Mm. I feel like people look at me as like as a juxtaposition. Ah, uh. you know, because whenever I post some shit and it's like he's a big dude, but he backflips, or like he's a big dude, but he sounds like this. Like people get kind of like. Yeah. So people don't look at me for, like, my aesthetic or, like, how cool I am. It's more of, like, what the fuck is this dude? You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what people, because anytime I post something that is a juxtaposition post. They're not used to it. They're, they're, it goes up because they're like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. No, I see that. So, yeah, everybody, artists look at other artists, like, pe my fans might look at this video and be like, yo, like, he's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and that's why I'm really just trying to feed that juxtaposition. Like, how can I make them, like, how can I fuck their minds up more? Yeah. And then let's talk about some of the, like, the, even, like, the criticism, right? Slight criticism. I remember seeing one time someone tweet something about, um, like, Jaleel... And his music, and I think specifically, it was like a tweet about like Rhode Island, like, oh, Jaleel is, uh, might go down like in Rhode Island history or like one of the biggest rappers in Rhode Island. And then someone was like, well, yeah, he makes music like, like, like white people music, something like that, right? And I saw that and I was like, I don't really agree with that, but I'm trying to like analyze like, why would that be someone's take? But what would you say? Have you seen any of that sort of maybe criticism? Would it be, like, how I said earlier, where it's not the stereotypical money, drugs, and bitches? Like, and at the same time, just because it's a black kid making music that's positive, still rap, why does it have to be for white people? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that shit, that's not as... I, I don't think that's the reason why, yeah. like, I blew up. I feel like it's just a juxtaposition thing again. Yeah. Think about it, like, Yee, right? Yeah, Yee. Shout out to Yee. Yee, he look white. Yeah. I think he's, like, mixed with something. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. However, his sound is very... People would say it's, like, a black sound. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You know? So, I feel like him doing that, and then, like, with the tal with the turban, like... Yeah, yeah. It's all, like, a... It's all juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. You know? Or even... I, I bring her up a, a lot, but even, like, Ice Spice, like... Ice Spice comes from New York, you know, and... Everybody knows New York is yeah. like a gritty place, but she's more like, like more nice, like more like, you know, like just like, like people look at her and be like, yo, like I can listen to her, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And she has um 
She has a cute look with the hair yeah. and everything. So everything just juxtaposition. I, I can see that. I, I agree with that. I, I can I can I, I like I like that you said that. I can see where it comes off like Yeah. Easily, especially for like an ice spice type of character, because like the soft spokenness and like the little elegance ness, yeah. but then at the same time, she might say some wild shit, but she'll say it like in a soft tone, soft tone yeah. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's still on some New York shit, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I feel like everything is just junk. That's what people look for me, yeah, they look for juxtaposition. So, when it comes to you, right, and right now you're on tour, but you've been getting more and more popular. You're very, you're very religious, but has there been like any experiences? Like, do you see yourself maybe when it comes to the the girls? Like, is there like a a, a Miss Jaleel in your future? Like, what is your situation right now? And especially when it comes to like these artists, right? Because I feel like it's so easy to be like, like you see, like kids at home might be sitting down, like, damn, yo, Jaleel, Jaleel is popping right now. Like, he's probably with Ice Spice, so he's probably with this and that. Do you see yourself ever like? As a kid, like having a celebrity crush and now being a celebrity and maybe trying to make that happen, or is that something that you know is not you're not thinking about at all right now? That type yeah, of situation. Man. I always think about shit like that, you know. <laughs> but I feel like if it happens, like you know, it happens. But I'm never like forcing it, you know, because it goes back to the marketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like yeah. when artists are in relationships. They low key get more of a buzz, like a G Herbo, his relationship. People might know G Herbo, <clears throat> excuse me, people might know G Herbo because of his girl, yeah, yeah, but they might not know G Herbo's song. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Fact, fact, facts. It definitely is a play, like, you know what I mean? Like, when artists date other artists, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think, <laughs> I, think, I think it will happen. I just don't know who. Facts. But facts. It has to make sense. It has to make sense. It's a thing, like, People got to see and be like, yo, what? <laughs> you know? Facts. And then going to that aspect, right? Females, but females love R&B. Earlier you mentioned 112. Do you see yourself ever going into like the R&B lane? Yeah, I was going to put an R&B song on my album. Why, why didn't you? Why made you like take it away? I didn't know if it was ready yet. You you Would have been like, too soon maybe for your fan base, you think? Yeah, because like. I wish I did put it, yeah. you know, after like a week later and I was like, fuck, but I'll give it its own moment. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like as a single or something. It'll happen. And then right now you, you, you have this new genre, right? What is it? Afro? Afro rage, yeah. Afro rage, right? The dance hall rage, Afro rage, yeah. So was this something that uh, existed prior or did you come up with it? What do you think about that? Because I've seen a lot of people talking about like the Afro rage and then it might have yeah. maybe existed. Obviously elements of it, but did you like put the name on it, the Afro rage? I called it that because I felt like it was rage and it was Afro and yeah, and yeah, I put the name on it, you know. I was just having fun in the studio, but you know, if, if someone else feels like they put their name on it, they can put that name on it too. Facts, facts, facts. You know, but yeah, Tamale is like a dance hall rage, Afro rage type of song. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no. I, lo I, I love screaming that I'm African, you know? I love that. I love the embodiment of just who you are, your culture. And because at the end of the day, you know, your family is going to be, I feel like, more proud of that as well. Like, they probably might be watching this, you know, shout out to mama and, and dad, yeah. you know, the whole family, Jaleel family. They probably might be watching this, so... You just embodying that wherever you go, you know, yeah. repping, you know, your your Africanness, Nigerianness, I feel like it's a beautiful thing, you know. And in the African music world right now, like this year, again, that last year was blowing up like with the radio songs, et cetera. But this year again, like we got the Taliban, the sake um Tal that Taliban songs. The Taliban is hard, is hard. By Bryce, that shit's hard, right? That's just going That's why that's probably my that's favorite just, song this year so far. That song is crazy. But I'm like, damn, like, how is that? Like, how did that song start blowing? Like, did he just drop it and it just blew? Like, you know? It could be, right? Because I don't even know how he really looks. Yeah, I seen how he looked, like, on Twitter. Like, it just randomly popped up. TikTok blew that shit up, you think so? You heard it on TikTok? You've been hearing it on TikTok? So it could be TikTok that. TikTok blew it up. It could be one of those. 
Well, that song is hard. Might be the song of the summer now. It might be song of the summer. You know. You know. It might be Afrobeat summer again. You know. But then again, we don't really know. This year's been very strange. This has been the first history, uh, or like in a while, Billboard said in, in a good amount of time that there hasn't been like a number one rap song or like rap album on the Billboard like 100, right? So this year, I feel like everyone's kind of diving more into like, I guess you can call it like, uh. Like house, like the house technical techno vibes, right? And also yeah. we got the the new Spanish corrido, the Mexican corrido I that's been him. blowing up, Is right? He with the hat and yeah, with the <laughs> yeah, I see him, I see him. That they, that shit's been blowing up crazy. Yeah. So do you see yourself like you already have the Afro rage? You said you would do R and B, but would you ever go to the levels of like doing Spanish, a different language? Yeah, I mean. I have, honestly, I have R&B songs out. I have Afro B songs out. So I'm always down to keep trying stuff, like even reggaeton. Yeah, yeah. You know, like ballet funk. Like, yeah. I want to do everything. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, do you know Spanish at all, no? Como te llamas? Un poquito. Yeah, un poquito. Now, I'm learning just like, I know you you Dominican or Puerto Rican? Dominican, straight, 100% Dominican, yep. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yep. You got to teach me Dominican. I mean, you got to teach me uh, Spanish. Spanish. I can teach you some Spanish, and you know what I'm saying? I know earlier you said, like, you know, the females will happen down along the line, but if you need me to connect you to some beautiful Dominican Rhode Island woman from Broad Street, just let me know. With it. There's, so, there's plenty. Bro, nigga, Broad Street is like a mini New York. Dead ass, bro, like. But when I tell New Yorkers that, they be like, what? They be getting mad. <laughs> they take it so personal. They take it to heart. Yeah. I was like, most of the niggas that come from New York are, I mean, that, that live in Broad Street. Yeah. That are from Rhode Island, that are Dominican, they come from New York, too. Yeah. No, that's yeah. facts. That's facts. And then talking about uh, Rhode Island... What would be your words to any artist from Rhode Island that's a rapper coming up that wants to be as successful as a Jaleel? Because you arguably are the most successful Rhode Island rapper, you know, of all time, at least for our generation, for sure. So what would be that advice? They're looking at this right now. They're like, yo, Jaleel, what should I do? What the fuck should I do? Yo, find something that's unique to you and use the Internet. Because nowadays, you kind of have to be more than an artist. You can't just be like, oh, I make music. Like, what about you is, is, is appealing? Yeah. You can't hide behind a, a wall anymore. Yeah. Even, like, Destroy Lonely and Ken Carson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're very, like, incognito and shit. But, like, people know who they are and how they look and their yeah. aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you got to find a way to show people who you are but not... You gotta show people. You got you. You gotta be a character. Yeah, yeah. You have to be a character nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, you can have a song blow up, but if you're trying to make it in hip hop and you're in the underground, you have to be a character. You have to. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Name another underground artist that blew up in the last two years. Like blew up big. Yeah. No. Can't name one. Yeet, Yeet right now would be. Yeah, Yeet would probably be like the the king of the underground right now, right? Yeet. Yeet. Yeet's the only one. Yeah, the only one, right? But you know why? Because he's his whole thing is a character. Yeah. The Tonka, the Tonka, the 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 clothes he wears. Yeah, the clothes he wears, his sound, him making up the words. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all a character. That's true. That's very true. You know, yeah. You got to make people believe that's you, like, 24-7. Yeah. No. I can see that. And then right now, where would you see yourself, Jaleel, like, 10 years from now? Do you, do you think that long? Like, did you think that long now? Like, back then, 10 years ago, today, did, were you already manifesting what was happening today? Like, yo, 10 years from now, I'm going to be on tour. I'm going to be big. I'm going to make it out of Rhode Island. And then going from that, where do you see it 10 more years? You know what I'm saying? Man, I just want to make a huge impact. 
you know, be a living legend, go down as one of the, go down as one of the greats. And, you know, I want to, I want to be a household name. I want to be worldwide. Yeah. I don't just want to be an artist from Rhode Island. Yeah. I'm, I want to be an artist that's in Nigeria. I want to be an artist that's in Greece. That's yeah. That's in, I don't know, China, everybody, everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I want to have Jaleel Juice, Jaleelios. Like, I want to, I want to be everywhere. Yeah. I want everybody to be like, yo, this, this dude really made it. You yeah. Know? So you do you care? Do you care? So you don't care at all like when people categorize your music maybe like if they don't see it as like a rapper cuz you're not necessarily lyrical like does it matter to you where your music kind of is categorized because I feel like in hip hop they have such a sub a, a, a sucky time, a bad time with subgenres. Like we have so many subgenres but I feel like people kind of forget to embody them. You know what I'm saying? So do you care like oh Jaleel's is he really a rapper? Is he not a rapper? Like, do you care where your music is categorized as? People can name it what they want to name it, you know? Like, either you fuck with it or you don't, you know? And yeah. that's fine, like... So you don't give a fuck? Fuck it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't really think about it too much. You don't care. Nah. People already... People, people already look at me as a TikToker. Yeah. Because I blew up on TikTok. They'd be like, oh, he, he not a real artist cause, just because he blew up on TikTok, so... Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck what people say. Like, they call me this, they call me that, they call me whatever they want. But, yeah, you know, God's plan is bigger than theirs. So, you know, whatever they can think, they can think, but yeah. God has, God already wrote it. You know? It's written in stone. And it's happening right now. Yeah, it's happening. You know what I'm saying? Before I go crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, is it much, uh, what's left on it right now? Okay, okay. I mean, yeah, we could wrap it up. Any Anything you had in mind at all? Any thoughts or anything at all? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Thank you. Shout out Club Ambition. Shout out Rhode Island. Shout yes, out, sir. Shout out Prov. Shout out Pawtucket. Shout out Jaleel. Yeah. Jaleel, yeah. Listen, that was good. That was great. <laughs> you got to rate. So I'm going to do it. Rate my Jaleel 1 through 10 with Jaleel himself, right? Yeah. <clears throat> this is how I hear it. Jaleel, yeah. I'll rate it like an eight, because you didn't have... <laughs> it's supposed to be like, yeah. Jaleel, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a nine. It's, it's almost like, kind of like a moan. Yeah. A little bit of a moan. Jaleel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to have that. <laughs> you know, have that provider at the end. Listen, man, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Um, You know... Shout out to everybody out here. You can see that you got the place rocking. The openers are going crazy. We about to see Jaleel perform right now in Brighton, Massachusetts. About to shut the place down. But any last words at all? It doesn't have to be to Rhode Island, but anyone at all watching at all. Anything on your mind? If you're Rhode Island and you're listening to this, yo, I love y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing. Use the internet. Use that. Literally, use the internet. Like, Post reels every day. <laughs> like, like there's no, there's no playbook. Yeah. Just find a way. Yeah. I wish I had the playbook, but you know, my story is going to be different from yours, but the internet is a way. Yeah. So use the internet. You heard it from the man yourself right there. Jaleel on Club Ambition Podcast. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to everywhere. Audio platforms, YouTube. Check it out. And right now we have the Jaleel album Real Raw Energy. on your phone. Jaleel. Look it up yeah. on all your phones available right now. Make sure to support it. And yeah. there we have it, man. Love, bro. Appreciate you, man. Peace. They gonna love me for my ambition. Thanks for watching a clip from our podcast. If you want to watch the full podcast, click right here. If you want to check out one of our reactions, the latest ones, click right here as well. Appreciate you. Subscribe. Smash that like button, leave a comment, and show us how much you hate us. <laughs>